Welcome to my video on a hedging example for a buyer. Now what I want to do is work through a problem, show you exactly how you would address something that you may get given on a test. All right, let's take a look. I'm going to read the example here, but what you are is you are a buyer of corn. Today is April and you need to buy corn in July. So your problem is from April now, which is our today period, April to July, you don't know what the price is going to do. And what is a buyer worried about? Buyers are worried about the prices going up on them. So we want to look at this example from a buyer's perspective. All right, so today is April. We need to buy corn in July. Corn prices were high last year. In my example, I'm going to say well above $3. But the current futures price on a September contract is about 288 a bushel. So it's apparent to see that it looks like prices appear to be low. Current cash price at the local grain operator from storage also right now is 278. So once again, we're looking at low prices. Current excessive rainfall and late planting are possible that would create a, a reduction in supply and they're worried about price going up. So that's kind of our beginning situation. First question that would come out of that is what is the, does the excessive rainfall and late planting have for the risk of the buyer? The example, the example for this or the answer for this would be that the buyer is worried about prices going up. And so that is our risk in this situation. Now, in fact, that's the risk for every buyer. So first question that may be asked is when you're given a situation like this is what is the risk? What does the late planning have to do with it? What is the risk? Really, anytime you're a buyer, your risk is always the price going up. So it's a pretty easy answer to the question. All right, so let's look at how we would take this beginning information and set up a hedge. Well, if you remember from our other videos, uh, really there's a hedger is involved in two markets. They're involved in the cash market and they're involved in the futures market. And so I want to make sure I set these two up. I also want to set up my dates. Today is April. So that is the first date. And we have risk all the way until when we actually need to buy this corn in July. And so this begins to set up my hedge example. I'm also going to have over here something called the basis. And so as you're writing notes down, remember, be an active learner and take notes. This is our example situation to get us started, but this chart is what you need to set up. So make sure you get this set up in your example here. All right, we also had some information in the beginning situation that tells us that cash at the local grain elevator where we could buy it is $2.78 a bushel. Now that's in April. Our problem, once again, is we don't need that corn until July. So we look at the local grain operator and it says $2.78 from our example, and we say, well, that's what I could buy it for, but I'm not ready. Now we go over to the futures market and we see that a September contract. Now, first of all, why do we pick September? This contract month needs to be after our position in the market is finished. So you've got August and September. This contract, September contract, will still be heavily traded in July. So that's a good contract for me to work with. All right, a September contract, I believe, was trading for 288. That means you have a basis of 10 cents. Cash minus futures equals basis. All right, so this is our beginning situation. Our risk is that price would go up on us. So we have risk in this market. It would hurt us if the price went up. We need to be in a position where this market will help us. That's kind of the seesaw that we talked about before. So what you do is you take a buy position on this contract. And remember, a buy term is called long in the market. So we would take a buy position on that September contract and that would set the hedge. This is called your what again? This is called your lock-in price. Now that's what we're trying to target. So if we lose money in this market, we can make money back in this market and depends on what our basis does to us, but these can completely offset each other based on our beginning situation here. All right, so now the next part of the problem is usually going to be, all right, so what happened in July? That was our worry. But you got to make sure you have this set up correctly, so hopefully this helps you. All right, let's go down to the next situation. We finally get to July, 
and cash corn is now $2.90 a bushel. So if you look at it, it was $2.78, it went up to $2.90. That means we lost 12 cents. Now, don't get confused in the negatives. In fact, I probably should write loss here. Why is it a loss? Well, the prices went up, but remember we are a buyer. So prices going up is not good, it's bad. So that's why I have a negative or a loss of 12 cents. Now this negative, because it's a seesaw effect, remember, I'm in a different position over here. So I bought when the prices were low. If the price went up, then I can sell it and I'll make money on that. Now, what we're still doing to look at is a September contract. And in this last situation here, the September contract now is trading for $3.10 a bushel. So we had a buy position on this September contract way back in April. Don't get too confused. These are the beginning situations. This is the final ending situation. So if you bought something for 288 and it becomes worth 310, a good idea is to take a sell position on that contract. And when you do, you will be able to make 288 to 310. And that is, what would that be? Yep, 22 cents in profit. So I'll write that down as well. Profit and the plus hopefully makes sense. The loss and the negative hopefully makes sense. But remember, it's always about knowing the kind of position you're in. In this case, I'm a buyer. So price is going up, it's not good, that's bad. All right, so what about the basis? 290 minus 310, the basis is now a 20 cent basis. So what we really look at here some people focus on the negative and the positive. I don't. The basis was negative. The basis is still negative. So really, would the basis change by it? Change by 10 cents. And this change in basis and my lock-in are going to be things I compare. But how do you check your work? That's something to point out here. How do you check your work? Well, the change in the basis ought to equal the change in the markets. So this column gives you the change. This row also ought to equal that, and so I am checked. That's in good shape. All right, so that's the beginning situation. There's the ending situation. Here's how you would put this in a table. What are some questions that are common out of this? Well, the first question is, what is the change in basis? In fact, let me change gears here. The first question is usually going to be, what's the change in basis? and that's gonna be the answer of 10 cents. Next question is gonna be, is what is the cash price paid for corn? And so the cash price paid for corn is 290. Now don't get too confused, we had a 278 here. The problem is that was the beginning situation. This is what you actually ended with and that's when we actually need to buy the corn. So we really bought the corn in July that was our problem. And so that's what you paid for your corn. So cash price of corn. Another common question is what's the profit? Let's say I'm gonna put number two up there. What's the common profit? Another question, what's the common? What's the common? That's dumb. What's the profit on the hedge? Well, the profit on the hedge is going to be this whole situation here. So that's kind of a number three question that's commonly asked. Now you may stop and say, hold on a minute. 22 cents, didn't I sell the corn here? I no longer have the corn. Well, you have to remember this is one market and this is a second market. So the futures, you bought a contract at 288. You held the contract. Later on, that same contract became worth 310. So you sell the same contract to someone else that needs it. And that means that you had a profit of 22 cents a bushel. So those are common questions. The last one is the biggest, and I want to write it out for you, and that is net price. So what happened for us as a buyer of corn? Well, remember, you're involved in how many markets? Two. So you got to look at both markets. All right, cash price. What did we pay for our corn? And the answer is $2.90. And I'm going to write it out here as what we paid for the corn, okay? Now we're a buyer, so we protected our price using the futures market, and so the next is gonna take the 22 cents 
profit on the hedge because that's what we were able to bring back in profit. Now let's go underneath here. Now once again, positives and negatives kind of mess with you, but you just got to slow down and think about it. I am a buyer. I paid a high price of 290, but I used the futures market to help protect me and it, bring, it brought me back 22 cents in profit. Kind of like thinking about auto insurance is a, maybe a good example. If you have a car and you wreck that car and it's going to cost $3,000 to fix the car. Now the $3,000 to fix the car is a new paint job and lots of extra stuff. Your insurance pays you $2,500 back. They give you a check for $2,500. If you're telling somebody, hey, I got out of that wreck and it didn't work out too bad, it actually only cost me, what, $500 to fix up the car and get it repainted. Insurance paid $2,500 of it. That's the same deal here. I have a price I paid for corn. It's $2.90. It's extremely high compared to where I wanted to be. In fact, it's 12 cents higher but I actually was able to use the futures market like insurance to give me 22 cents back. So what did we really pay for the corn? We really paid 268 is our net. So I subtracted my profit. What would a seller do? A seller would look at this completely different. Profit for them would help them get more higher of a price. Profit for me as a buyer is the price gets cheaper. So 276 is my net price. And how can you check that? Well, your net price always should be equal to the lock-in and the change in basis. I tried to lock in 278. The change in basis was 10 cents. So I got 268 as a net. Why? Because the futures market helped me cover a 12 cent loss in cash but it gave me 22 cents back extra. That's 10 cents extra. That means the price that I tried to get, I'm actually better by 10 cents. So 268. So these are common questions at a for a problem in looking at a hedge for a buyer. Make sure you set up the table. Make sure you get in your two beginning situation, ending situation. Make sure you've got the cash market prices and the futures market prices, two separate markets, as we've talked about in the videos. The basis just helps you explain what happened in this table. But hopefully this video gives you a good step-by-step -step of the kind of ways you would get a problem and how you would work that out. Thanks.